Hey there Dragonborn, Kondo Geriatrics here with another Kato's Countdowns and our first dive, at least in this format, into the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This countdown will be dealing with daggers. The upside to daggers are their highest sneak damage potential from 15 times to 30 times and the fact that they are the only completely silent melee weapon in the game. The two criteria for this list are they must be uniques either in looks or effect and the second criteria is damage. So the unique with the highest damage will be at the top. And since the foundation of this channel is no-nonsense guides and walkthroughs, you can expect that I will show you the locations of where to get these daggers as well. So, these are the five most deadly, spine-splitting, throat-thwarting, downright dangerous, unique daggers in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Wait a gosh dang minute, this is just the steel dagger, is what Bloodthorn would like you to believe. Its base damage is 8 instead of 5 that a normal steel dagger has, but it can be upgraded the same way with steel ingots. The real treasure here is Bloodthorn's unique enchantment that cannot be found otherwise nor disenchanted for use in other weapons. What it tells you from the menu is that it has a soul trap effect, filling a soul gem if the target dies within 3 seconds. But the hidden effect is hinted at through the effects you see on the dagger itself, which are red instead of purple. On top of the soul trap effect, it has a health absorb effect as well. These are both a part of the Hag's End enchantment. But with a little bit of extra experimenting, I did learn something else very interesting about Bloodthorn 2. So you know how some enemies, say Dwarven Automatons, are resistant to Soul Trap or even immune? Well, Bloodthorn slices right through that immunity. You can Soul Trap Dwarven Spiders, Spheres, and Centurions with the Bloodthorn, making Bloodthorn ideal for harvesting Soul Stones and trapping souls at the same time in a Dwarven Ruin. This can be your means to keep it charged as well, because the Bloodthorn uses up charges pretty quickly. So now let's go over how to get the Bloodthorn. And here's hoping you're prepared to fight some Forsworn. The enchantment effect kind of gives it away, but we're looking for Hag's End. This is to the northeast of Markarth in the Snowy Mountains, but is its own self-contained outdoor area. You can access Hag's End through Deepwood Redoubt, just west of Hag's End. As most dungeons go, this is a fairly long one, and once you get to the main structure of Hag's End, the Hag Raven that resides here will play cat and mouse with you as you're climbing the ruin. Or play Hag and Dragonborn, whichever. Once reaching the top, she will have nowhere to go, and upon being defeated, Bloodthorn should be on the sacrificial table up top as long as it wasn't knocked off the edge from the Hag Raven's explosive spells. Keening is unique in its entirety, but for the work you put in to get it, and without the assistance of mods, it's a bit of a chore to get it to work properly and consistently. Keening, like the Bloodthorn, has a base damage of 8, but unlike the Bloodthorn, it cannot be upgraded at a grindstone, putting it at its first disadvantage. The dagger itself is beautiful, dwarven design with a semi-transparent crystalline blade. The enchantment it comes with is a chance to absorb 10 points of health, magicka, and stamina on strike but it doesn't have a charge bar and no way to recharge it. So once the effect goes off on that whatever chance it is, you won't be able to recharge it to use that effect again. Supposedly, you can outfit your Dragonborn with Fortify Destruction enchantments, and once reaching 100% with them, Keening will not lose its one charge. But that's four pieces of gear you have to have Fortify Destruction on at all times while you're wielding Keening. I'll let you decide whether that's worth it. Because of the several tasks it takes to get Keening, I have to say the work put in is not really worth it. But it does look cool, might look great in a display case if you're playing a Dwemer Collector character. So let's get on to collecting it. You can gain Keening through the quest Arneal's Endeavor. Now to take Arneal's Endeavor all the way to completion, you'll need to have gotten to the end of the Eye of Magnus, which is the main quest arc in the Mage's College. Normally, you can find Arneal, who's wearing yellow robes, in the Hall of Attainment. And once you speak to him, you can ask him if he needs anything done. If you have completed the quest Hitting the Books, the first task for Arneal will begin. His first request, 10 Dwemer Cogs. Now if you want to search for these individually in a Dwemer Ruin, by all means. It builds character, as they say. But if you want the easier route, in the Understone Keep in Markarth is the Dwemer Museum. Find your way in by either speaking to Calselmo or just breaking in. And after you enter the museum, take your first right when possible, and around the Dwarven Spider Sculpture will be all of the cogs that you need. Turn in the cogs to Arneal after good intentions has been completed, 
and he will send you on the next task, which is talking to Enther and getting the warped soul gem that he wants. Bring Enther the staff that he wants, and he'll give the warped soul gem in trade. Now, after the Eye of Magnus is completed, you can return to Arneel and find out that the project is going badly. He will send you with the warped soul gem and a new spell to seek out three Dwemer Convectors to heat up the Warp Soul Gem for him and return. Returning with the modified Soul Gem and waiting a few in-game days before speaking to him again, we'll begin part four for the thing we're here for. Arneel will mention about Enther giving him trouble again, but then Enther will say it's out of his hands. The courier he was in contact with disappeared, which sends you to a radiant location where you'll find the courier's corpse and where you will finally locate Keening. You can return to Arneel and hand him the dagger, don't worry, you'll get it back in a moment, he proceeds with his experiment and then disappears. You can pick up Keening from the floor and gain the conjuration spell, Arneel's Shade. At this point, I feel like Arneel's Endeavor is called an Endeavor for a reason, because this takes a very long time. But Keening is cool looking. Much less of an Endeavor to obtain is the Blade of Sacrifice, a quite rare variant of the Ebony Dagger. It shares the Ebony Dagger's base damage of 10, but has a weight of 4 instead of 5, and by looks, it has fewer of the Ebony etchings and is darker in color, and also has a bit of a green sheen when light hits the Blade of Sacrifice in just the right way. Unlike the Ebony Dagger though, the Blade of Sacrifice cannot be enchanted, but if you're going for raw damage around level 30, this will be among the best you can obtain at that point. Even though this is an ebony tier weapon, it can be obtained 6 levels before ebony gear starts appearing in chests. Once you hit level 30, you are able to do the quest Boethia's Calling. The Sicelum of Boethia, where most of this takes place, is to the southeast of Windhelm. Travel up the mountains to the Sicelum, and a priestess of Boethia will tell you what you need to do to reach this Daedric Prince, if you wish to follow through. You are given the objective to sacrifice a follower at the pillar up top with the Blade of Sacrifice that is given to you at no charge. All of the cultists surrounding the Sicelum of Boethia are also carrying Blades of Sacrifice, and no matter how you approach this quest, they all end up dead anyway, letting you acquire multiple Blades of Sacrifice if you so choose. A favorite among trained killers is Merun's Razor. Received through dealings with another Daedric Prince, the damage of Merun's Razor is matched with Daedric Daggers. Makes sense, it's a Daedric artifact. Merun's Razor does weigh half as much of a Daedric Dagger though, at 3 instead of 6. And when it comes to grindstones, this can be upgraded with an Ebony Ingot. The beauty of Merun's Razor though is not just in its looks or its reduced weight, it's what it can do for the wielder. It comes with an enchantment with infinite charges that has a nearly 2% chance on strike to instantly kill your target. There are only two individuals in Skyrim that are immune to the instant kill effect of Merun's Razor, and that is Mirak and Karstag the Frost Giant, both which are bosses in their own right in the Dragonborn DLC. Anything else, dragons included, can instantly die from a lucky strike from Merun's Razor. I do believe that makes this dagger one of the most, if not the most, deadly weapon in Skyrim. Mind you, the only thing not putting it at the top of this countdown is its base damage. I don't think there's any more convincing needed here though, let's go over how to get yourself the Merun's Razor. The quest tied to this dagger is Pieces of the Past which requires you to be level 20 and begins once you meet up with Silas Versius, a collector of Mythic Dawn artifacts in Dawnstar. If you don't show up immediately at level 20, you will also receive an invitation via courier. But once you show up, he will invite you inside and reveal his plan in collecting the remaining pieces of Merun's razor and ultimately making it whole again. But first, you are given the chore of retrieving the three remaining pieces he needs. First, nearest and easiest is the hilt of Merun's razor. This is kept by Jorgen, a man who lives in Morthal. You can speak to Jorgen and try to convince him that you need the hilt more than he does, or simply go into his house and steal it when he's not looking. Or when he is looking, I'm not here to tell you how, just where. Second is the pommel stone. This is held by a hag raven named Draskua. She is in a ruin southwest of Markarth called Dead Crone Rock. It'll be quite the climb and quite the fight to reach Draskua, but once she is defeated it will be on her body. Third and final are the shards of Merun's razor. 
These are stashed away in a vault of an orc leader named Gunzul at a stronghold called Cracked Tusk Keep, west of Falkreath. There are multiple ways to gain access to the vault here in Cracked Tusk Keep. The front entrance and the hatch up top will eventually take you to Gunzul, who has the key to the vault. Or if you just feel like breaking and entering, the side door of the keep leads directly to the vault, with additional expert lockpicking required. Go down to the vault, avoid the traps, or hit all the traps, and retrieve the shards, and you'll have all the pieces you need for Mayrune's Razor. If you return to Silas, he will pay you for each piece, and then request one last thing from you, to travel up to the shrine of Mayrune's Dagon to have the dagger renewed. Silas does not survive the encounter if you wish to keep the dagger, but that's what dealing with Daedric Princes is all about, sacrificing stuff and things and people. Afterward, you are rewarded with the most deadly dagger in all of Skyrim. The number one most powerful, but not most deadly dagger in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is the Blade of Woe, a painfully sharp looking dagger with a base damage of 12, matching that of the Dragonbone Dagger, and a slightly higher weight of 7. The Blade of Woe also comes with an absorb 10 points of health enchantment. If you're upgrading it at the grindstone, it actually doesn't require any ingots to be upgraded. So all you need is the grindstone and the arcane blacksmith perk, and you'll be able to improve the Blade of Woe's damage. This is a dagger with another enchantment that is tied to its user's skill in destruction magic. The higher your skill in destruction, the more charges you'll get out of the Blade of Woe before you have to recharge it. And of course, maximizing your fortified destruction up to 100% with enchanted gear will give you infinite charges. So, dual wielding the Blade of Woe and any of the others on this list will make for fun combos of effects. So now, where to get the Blade of Woe? Astrid, the leader of the Dark Brotherhood, is wielding this dagger. So to obtain your Blade of Woe, or two of them, you will need to at least enter initiation into the Dark Brotherhood. And you can do that from Windhelm by getting in touch with Aventus Aretino for the quest Innocence Lost. You'll know you're in front of the right house because there is a dark elf and a child talking out in the open about Aventus performing the Black Sacrament. Break into the house and speak to Aventus Aretino and he will give you a Dark Brotherhood contract to take care of Grelod the Kind in Riften. Do so however you see fit and return, complete the contract and you will eventually get a letter from the Dark Brotherhood through a courier letting you know that they know. And once you know that they know, take a little nap, and you will awaken in a shack with three prisoners and Astrid. So this is the point where you get to decide whether you want one or two. If you kill Astrid right here, you just get one. If you pickpocket her with the misdirection perk, you can steal it off of her. And then once the turning point of the Dark Brotherhood questline hits, she will give you another one. So that's how you get a Blade of Woe or Blade of Woes. And those are the five most powerful daggers in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. If you feel like there's one that I missed or one that should have gotten mentioned, please share in the comments below what it is and where we can find it because others will probably want to find it too. If you found this video useful, entertaining, or both, please do whatever you see fit to show that. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Wasteland Legends Fen for helping keep this channel going. And if you wish to join these awesome people in the on-screen credits, it only takes as little as a buck. And being in the credits is only the beginning of the perks. I want to thank you so much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander Tamriel like you own it.